was great to meet you. I cannot believe that this is the first time we're getting to meet. I've heard all about you. Um, yeah, likewise. And obviously our organizations know each other very well. So yes. nice to meet you. Um, all right. Well, you good to just jump in? Yeah. Um, so MedShare, we, we've been around now for over 20 years. Um, our mission is to improve the quality of life of people and the planet. So what does that all mean? Well, a couple of things. One is we spend our time really repurposing product that typically would have ended up in the landfill. Okay. And this is perfectly good, unopened, unused, unexpired products that we get through surplus from hospitals. We have direct contact with corporate manufacturers, individuals, you name it, distributors. So we, we collect upwards of two and a half million pounds of stuff wow. every year. And, uh, and then we use 20,000 volunteers a year to sort oh, through this. Yeah. I know, right? And sort through all of this product to get it into our inventory, you know, database. And we were just talking about technology. We, we have an on, online system, which we make available to our recipients. And, and it's just like uh, eBay or Amazon. They can go online and really order what they need as opposed to what we think they need. And, who, and who, so, who's the client? Yes, yeah, so our, our clients are varied. Mostly they are, you know, recipient hospitals and medical institutions around the world. Uh, and even here locally, we deal quite a bit with the safety net clinics who is providing quality health care to underinsured, uh, uninsured individuals. Uh, as typically who we're working with. Um, in not only in the city of Atlanta, but other parts of the U.S., other parts of the world, uh, rural communities that might not have the same access to medical care? Absolutely. I mean, our full name is Mesher International, Inc. <laughs> and so we are a global health company. And wow. we've, uh, we've, we've provided healing and hope to over you know, 100 communities around the world now. We've reached out to over 100 different countries. Uh, we do have locations in, a different, in, a, in addition to the Atlanta metro area. I've got a facility out in the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as up in uh, New York. And so, so we, we, we service all those communities in addition to our international. I, I would say most of our work, just based on the need, has gone to uh, sub-Saharan Africa, uh, just because the, the need is so great there. Then I would mm-hmm. say Central America. So those have been really two hotbeds, if you will, for support. And what we try to do is work with them to help build their, or strengthen their health system. Mm-hmm the delivery of these quality medical supplies and equipment. And we also do training. So I have an engineer now stuck in Nigeria, can't get home because he was there uh, training on how to do, you know, repair and maintain biomed equipment so it can keep, you know, producing quality health outcomes for those, uh, for those patients. Wow. Well, if you are listening to this or watching this and you are a part of Buckhead Church, you should feel really proud that uh, we get to partner with Charles and with MedShare. I know I certainly am. Um, Charles, tell us a little bit about your own story. Do you have a, do you have medical experience uh, in your career? Yeah, I mean, so my story, you know, I, I like to think my story is very interesting, but uh, it is a little bit uh, atypical for the nonprofit uh, world in that I spent the bulk of my career in the for-profit arena. So I spent, you know, upwards of 23 plus years with Johnson & Johnson. Mm. which is a, a huge, you know, global health company. And, uh, you know, my background, Clay, I'm, I'm, my training was in chemical engineering, Georgia Tech, so I'm a local. Me too. Uh, well, Okay, how, how about that? I, I studied industrial engineering. I did not do chemical engineering. You're, you, you did the hard stuff and the real stuff. Right. They called mine imaginary engineering. Yeah, we used to do that. <laughs> we used to call you that. So you, so you know all about those chemies, uh in fact, you may know Dr. Gary May, who was the uh, head of the uh, engineering school there. So Gary and I were in school at the same time. We were freshmen. Oh, wow. Uh, during the Tech campus at the same time. So that's wow. been my training. Okay. Uh, but in terms of the, the healthcare aspect, I would say come through J&J, where I was a, uh, a global vice president for, you know, manufacturing operations, supply chain. So doing wow. a lot of design development, supply chain management of medical devices for J&J around the world. So I've, I've Worked in facilities in Mexico. I've uh, I headed up operations throughout Asia Pacific. You know, doing a lot of work in China, a lot of work in India, and I and I think that was really what began to move on my heart. You know, personally, the fact that I saw the need was so great, 
and at the same time recognizing that we have such surplus and wealth here uh, in the United States. And so, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, our uh, company organization was founded on this principle of bridging this gap between the surplus and need, mm-hmm. the realization that you had such surplus in our health system here. At the same time, you had kids, children, families dying around the world that needed the stuff that we were calling, you know, in some cases, waste. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I think, you know, that background has really honed me for this job. You know, my knowledge of, you know, medical devices, regulations, supply chain management, international you know, running businesses. It's just really lent itself, I think, almost to this perfect marriage mm. of, uh, of that share and me. That's what I like to call it. <laughs> that, share. <laughs> that share and me. I love that. Yeah. Um, how long are, are you an Atlanta native? How did, how did you get to Atlanta? Yes, I'm actually, although I may not sound like it, I, I grew up here in Atlanta. Uh, I am Atlanta native. I moved away for, for quite some time and then came back in 2012 when I uh, joined MedShare, first as COO. And then two years into that, the board, you know, tapped me on the shoulder and said, no, you, you, you're our CEO. And so from 2014 now, and, and, you know, we've gone through a lot of transition change. Like anytime you put a new CEO, we, we all have our vision, our ideas. And, and really mine was, I have this, I've been on this uh, search for the why we do what we do. Mm-hmm. We spend a lot of time talking about what we do and how we do it. And I wanted to know why. And so that has really driven me to be very passionate about uh, outcomes, outcome metrics, uh, recipients, the people we serve. How do we know, you know, we're doing good by them? How we know we're not, you know, causing unintended consequences? And, and so that's the journey. That's the journey we've been on. And, and, and it's forced us to be a lot more of what we call programmatic in our approach. Uh, we used to just ship containers of things. And now we, we operate within programs. We have maternal child health program, which, you know, I'm proud to say Buckhead Church have supported quite a bit, you know, through our clean birthing kits and things of that nature. We have a primary care program where we provide mission trips, medical mission trips to remote communities. We uh, support local area safety net clinics. Uh, and, you know, we have disaster relief. I mean, <laughs> we're in the middle of that storm right now. So yeah. we respond and uh, throughout the year to a number of disasters. And we're in the middle of one now with the COVID-19 mm-hmm. uh, response. And then, and, you know, then the uh, the last program we have, which has also coincided with COVID, is this, uh, uh, is the, is the notion around this, uh, infectious disease uh, control readiness. And so we often... Uh, wanted to work with health communities and to help them provide provide them with PPE before an outbreak. And so we have a lot of partners that provide us with PPE, and that's we're in the middle of now we're distributing that to all the frontline health workers that that so desperately need. Wow. Well, that I don't know. That just Charles, listening to your story, uh, learning more about MedShare, it really. I know I mentioned this earlier, but it just makes me feel. Um, I'm so grateful that there are organizations like yours and our community doing what you do. And it's wild to think that you're headquartered here in Atlanta, Georgia, but you're doing work all over the world. And that's one of the fun things about getting, you know, for those of you that give money to Buckhead Church, those of you that give money directly to MedShare, this is your story. You get to be a part of this story that Charles's story is MedShare and me, but any of our stories can be MedShare and me because it's, um, you know, when you invest in an organization, you get to be a part of uh, all that the organization does. And you're you're doing some remarkable work, um, which I would love to dig into a couple of the specifics. Um, one of those, I, and I'm sitting here trying to remember the name of this piece of equipment, and it is driving me crazy that I cannot remember it. But we just gave you a check to, re, um, to repair some machines that clean medical um equipment what what were those machines called well you you've, you've provided us many checks for a lot of different things but <laughs> uh one, one of the most recent ones was uh it was uh, actually ultrasound uh we had some ultrasound machine that was used in, in maternal child health uh, again which is a program that you continue to support you know for us not sure if that's the one you are, are that's not. To. oh I, I know what you're talking about it's the it's the autoclave that's and, it uh, those are the yeah, ones. And uh, we use those to clean instruments. So so reusable instruments in the hospitals, they need an autoclave to sterilize the uh, instruments that they use for surgery. So 
Charles, words like that, I, I know when I saw that project come across the list, I thought, now I've learned something new. I never knew what an autoclave was. It, is that a word you're familiar with because of your Johnson & Johnson background? Yes. Okay. <laughs> quite, quite familiar. Okay. And, and, most, and most healthcare professionals would be because, uh, you, you know, there, there's a lot of surgical instruments that they need to have sterilized. For use and an autoclave is the unit that they use and we have a, a partner uh midmark is their name and, and the program that you supported us with is that they have a lot of uh return autoclaves that need basic repairs to make okay. them functional and we provide that to our to our recipients for use okay um so you've got to constantly your team i would imagine has to be fairly adept at going hey is this a is this a product that we can restore to, to be functional, or is this uh, not a good use of resources, time, money, energy to restore something? I, I assume that's something that you've got to become pretty um, swift and agile in. Yeah, more more so than people would, would think, because we, we go by the World Health Organization standards, which, which basically means if we can't use it here, then we shouldn't send it there. Wow. And so everything that we send is fully functional. We make sure there's a spare parts that we have them available. We make sure we have uh, instruction manuals uh, with that equipment. So it's a little bit more involved than I think on the surface people realize. And, and also we have to make sure that it's an appropriate donation. So even if it's a, a great piece of equipment, if they don't have the expertise on the other side to use it, that may not be an appropriate, appropriate donation. For wow. Yeah. Um, let's talk about COVID. Um, what, what has the last month been like for MedShare and how have you, what, have, what has changed and um, what are some of the challenges that you're feeling now because of the crisis that we're in the middle of? Yeah, you know, Clay, COVID for us really started uh, way before, you know, the last month or two. So I, w- I would say toward the end of January, early part of February, we were monitoring the impact of this, which then was an outbreak in China. And so our first focus was on providing, you know, PPE to try to help uh, prevent it from becoming a pandemic. So wow. we, we hit China pretty hard. We provided over, you know, three million masks uh, to China uh, and plus some isolation gowns and other things. Really just trying to, and that was due to gracious support we got from, you know, from funders. Uh, and then once it transitioned to the U.S. and uh, it really forced us to change our model. And, and usually, I would say 90 to 95 percent of our work is international. Mm. And the last two months, I would say 99, 5 percent of our, our work has been local. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so 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 it really it really, uh, you know, the outcry that came from our local communities was something we, quite frankly, were not used to. Uh, we had hospitals like Brady and Emory you know, contacting us, seeing if we had PPE. And these are usually places where we get our stuff done. Wow. And so wow. We, we turned our model around very quickly, uh, began to uh, provide PPE to local hospitals here in Atlanta, up in New York. You heard the news stories there out in California. So, you know, over the last two months, we we probably distributed close to a million pieces of PPE just in our local communities. And most of those were the N95 masks that you hear about, surgical procedure masks, and even Brady, we sent them five ventilators. So, it's just been so different, but much needed. Uh, and the other thing, Clay, if I might, each Friday for the last three Fridays, we've hosted kind of like a community clinic day where we invite 10 to 15 clinics just to come to mesh here. And we give them each about a uh, 3,000 pieces of PPE, gloves, gowns, masks, just so they can provide care for our marginalized uh, community members, right? Wow. So the shelters, the homeless, the you know, the, the, the people that don't have health insurance. So we've been trying to uh, support them and they've been very, very uh, appreciative. Wow. Uh, that is remarkable. Um, that speaks of great leadership on your part and your team's part that you were able to uh, pivot so quickly. Um, I mean, to think that you're 90 to 95% international and we're able to, on a dime, go, all right, we're going to we're going to shift gears without a clutch and begin servicing um, uh, the areas that are actually closest to us. That really, that, that says a lot about, about you and about your leadership. What are, as people are looking, you know, we've got so many different people in our community that um, are feeling 
their own sense of need. But what's really remarkable has been the number of people that are coming to us saying, hey, we want to help. What can we do? And so one of the reasons why I really wanted to highlight what you're doing is so that people could get involved. What are what are ways that people can um, can have their own med share in me story, Charles? Yeah, I mean, there, there's a number of ways. And, and first of all, you know, uh, I mentioned to you earlier, we depend so heavily on volunteers. And, and one of the things we have to do for our own personal safety and theirs is we stopped all our volunteers from coming. Mm. And uh, I get calls from in letters. They want to come back. And we're saying, no, we need to save you from yourself because of the social uh, <laughs> distancing. So I've got staff members that are actually doing what we typically would have the, the volunteers uh, uh, doing. So I, I think there's some creative uh, things that we're working on that I can use for examples that maybe people wouldn't have thought of that could help. Uh, there's some organizations that we begin to partner with that are making masks uh, that they want to donate to us that we mm. can that they distribute. Uh, we've had some of our partners that had things you wouldn't even think of, like rain ponchos, that it's been a huge demand. We've mm. got over 250,000 rain ponchos that we've been able to. Uh, you know, cash is always king. Um, you know, money, I think with the money that allows us to increase our reach, uh, to a lot of the different uh, communities that we need to get through. There's a lot of uh, costs associated with transportation, distribution, warehousing of these supplies. So that, that certainly helped us. But, you know, the best thing I would say people can help us now is, is to continue to buy by the social district. You know, right. let's not take this for uh, granted. Uh, you know, we, we are, we're, we're essential uh, uh, services providers. So we're here. I'm in the office every day. <laughs> Uh, we still have people coming by, dropping things off. So continue to do that. You know, wear your mask, you know, as you come and, and keep us in your prayers. I mean, because mm-hmm. uh, this is this is uh, this is heavy work. And I, I often think about not so much myself, but my staff, because yeah. they're balancing, yeah. you know, work and family issues at home, you know, and they're torn between being here to help the community at large and being there, you know, for their family. So. So it's really, it really can be a stressful time, but but this is why we exist. I mean, this is really the reason that Shear exists today, and and we just uh, are very thankful for the support we have received and welcome, you know, any all uh, continued support uh, for us. Well, um, I really do feel like you even showing up at work, your team continuing to show up as an essential um, place of employment, essential business. Um, it, you know, there's most of us. When, it, when something goes wrong, we run the other direction. And to have organizations like yours in the city that when there's a mess, when something goes wrong, when there's a crisis, that you're running right into it. Um, we just, we will definitely commit to be praying for you. And um, I just, to those of you that are listening or watching, I just would encourage you, if you have, if you've got equipment, if you've got, um, you know, I'm even thinking about our own, we've got a storage closet that I think there's about eight um, in 95 masks that are in there right now because I bought it years ago for the just mowing the lawn during the pollen season. But I'm sure. just, as I'm sitting here right now, I'm reminded I should bring those by MedShare and get those um, in circulation so that they can be used. Um, but for those of you that are listening and watching, please do the same thing. Um, support MedShare, be a part of the team. Um, this is an amazing organization doing amazing work and we just can't, um, we just can't encourage you enough to, um, support them in how, uh, whatever way you can. Charles, thank you. Um, thanks for thank your you. time. Um, thanks for what you're doing in the community. And um, I know we were commenting before we started. It's crazy that we have not been able to say hello. I do look forward to the day where I can maybe shake your hand. I don't know. Maybe give you a hug. I don't even know. I don't know yeah, what we're going to do absolutely. when we get back. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, listen, Clay, you've got a wonderful team there and uh, we enjoy working with them and we just so appreciate all the love and support and prayers you guys continue to shower on us. It means a lot. It really means a lot to us. So thank you from the well, bottom. You know, thank you. Uh, thank you. Have a great day. Stay all right, safe. Thank you. All, right. all right. Take care. Bye now.